That's right, souls are out. Oh, you didn't know that? Well, neither did I, but here we are. I love it when Stream Raiders releases new things completely unannounced. Anyways, I am sure you guys have lots of questions like, how do I get souls? How do souls work? What are the souls? Which unit should I hand over to the evil Jerry Overlord? Well, I promise to answer all of those and more, but before we do that, click that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already, especially if you want to see more Stream Raiders content. No, seriously, hit the button, please, uh, please. Anyways, first, in order to get a soul, you must acquire a soul vessel. Currently, the only way to unlock them is through the first soul vessel quest and the second soul vessel quest. Don't worry, though, soul vessels in the future can be acquired through the free part of the battle pass, events, and other quests, so there will be no shortage of them in the future. Next off, souls work by sacrificing a level 30 unit. This costs 2,000 gold for viewers and 1,250 gold for captains in order to do so. So only common souls are available at this time, and so you can only sacrifice your common units. You can only sacrifice souls on the computer currently, as the soul altar does not show up on the phone. It will be accessible on the phone at some point in the future though, hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. In order to sacrifice a soul, you just have to go to the army tab and find the soul altar on the right. Once you do that, you simply have to pick which soul you want to sacrifice and give it to Jerry for uh, safekeeping. You can move the soul around to any unit you want, but it becomes locked in once you place it in the battle. Once the battle is over and the unit with the soul is on cooldown, you can switch the soul to a different unit for the next battle. Unsure if it's going to stay that way, but it is pretty handy for testing out the souls. So that that's nice anyways this leads to what are the souls glad you asked because we have this lovely picture for you right there archer soul the unit gets plus one range and 25 percent attack speed this soul is the most versatile of the souls the soul can go on pretty much any unit and have a nice impact any melee unit and range unit benefit from it even supports like monks and healers can benefit from it you could even use it on centurions or flying rogues to keep them behind the normal lines i would avoid putting this soul on flags busters and saints flags don't really need more range or attack speed busters would blow up earlier which isn't necessarily a good thing and saints have zero use for attack speed or extra range so it's absolute garbage on that the last hidden thing about this soul that you guys might not realize it is likely going to be very very strong on the gladiator when that comes out up next is the warrior soul maximum defense against this unit's damage is reduced by 60 percent basically you are ignoring 60% of the enemy's armor with this soul equipped. The warrior soul will be most effective on high damage units. Bombers and artillery will benefit from this the most, but any range unit works well with this soul. Basically, the max defense for all units is 80%, with a few exception of armored units at 90% max defense against range, except for the paladin, of course. Instead of increasing the amount they attack, you increase the amount of damage per attack. This boon is extremely useful against armor units and units with high defense. It also is a really good counter to the saint and makes them almost useless. A little side note though, this boon is completely useless if the enemy has no defense. This boon also works well with busters and balloon busters. Moving on to tank soul, at battle start, creates a defensive zone in area 1.5 to if epic around the unit for 30 seconds. In the zone, allies do not move and gain 25% defense. This soul is a very strategic soul and I do not recommend you taking it if you are not planning to work with the captain this soul is used very well for delaying units and flank tactics using this soul without strategy can be harmful and can even lose battles placing this soul on the edge of the map or even within the group can lead to lost battle so be very careful how you use it misuse of this soul could even get you banned depending on how strict the captain is this soul is extremely powerful in verses especially paired with shinobis and it can be really good if you need the extra defense however be very careful when using this soul it is very strategic but can also be very counterproductive at 
that's the that's the last morning there you go on to the next one rogue soul once per battle when the unit goes below 50 percent health it teleports to the closest support ally it stops moving and becomes invincible for five seconds this soul is extremely powerful if you want to keep your units alive best used on epic units as they have more health and likely won't die before teleporting this soul doesn't always work as units can still die there's a slight delay between when the unit hits 50 percent health and when it teleports which makes it vulnerable however this soul is strong on shinobis armored units melee units and any other unit you want to keep alive it also can be used for flanks as it teleports to the closest support unit which means you can use it to teleport that unit to the other side of the map this soul is completely useless for busters as it won't work for them and it has very little use for supports as they likely won't move far and will only apply the invincibility for five seconds once they teleport to their friend right next to them rogue soul is likely best used on shinobi as well and i have seen people even using it on epic war beast just to keep them alive this soul could be very powerful in dungeons especially for the survivability of your units on to the last soul and certainly least but you know <laughs> Flag bearer soul. When the unit dies, a permanent flag is spawned that boosts 50% ally damage and attack speed in range of 3. The flag is indestructible and untargetable. This soul combos really well with the archer soul. The soul is mainly used on sacrificial units. Any unit you place in the front line or any unit expecting to die so it can give the buff to others. This soul works well on busters, sacrificial warriors, sacrificial rogues. It works well on flying rogues. Having a unit with a flag bearer soul die near a unit with an archer soul will stack the attack speed. This combo can be very powerful on certain units. This soul also provides massive value for lower level units, as they are cheap and can provide the buff at almost no cost. Using a level 1 sacrificial flag bearer is extremely cost efficient and is very useful on lower level dungeons. This soul may be one of the weakest souls, but it still does have a lot of use especially in combo with the other souls also a little tip and trick that you guys might not know yet after some testing it is confirmed that the rogue soul can teleport to the flag bearer souls flag which is interesting anyways that's it last thing before i go i recommend picking one of each soul and not to get two of the same soul souls can be changed after each battle so two of the same soul will not help too much also i would recommend getting the archer soul and the warrior soul first the archer soul is one of the most viable souls as it can go in almost any unit and the warrior soul is the strongest soul for dealing damage it is very powerful especially against armored units and there you go if you have any more questions about souls please comment down below and i will gladly address them as i've been testing them for a couple days now also in the comments tell me which soul is your favorite and why anyways yep that's it everybody see you guys in the next one i have a lot more updates and a lot more stream raiders content ready for you guys so i am excited to see a lot of that please remember hit the subscribe button for more Bye bye